So, welcome back for the third module of this week. So, in the last lecture, we were talking about computational morphology. Okay. So, so in this module, we will talk about how do we use finite set methods for doing this morphological analysis. Okay. So, I'll just go in briefly into what these models do. So, starting with what is a finite state automaton. Okay. So, if you have taken a course on formal languages automated theory or theory of computation, you might already be aware of what is a finite state automaton. I will just briefly tell what is a what what is this. Okay. If you have not taken a course, that course you might just want to quickly see that in one of the um, one of the books for that course. Okay. So, what is a finite state automaton? So, it is kind of a directed graph. Okay. So, so in this in this figure you are seeing uh, there is a finite state automaton that is having six different nodes. So, these are the nodes here are called the states okay. and there are edges between the nodes and they are the edges are labeled with certain symbols. So, for example, you are seeing between node 0 to 1 there is an there is an edge with a, with a label of C okay. and they may also be empty if for certain category of these automaton. There are certain start states. So, so, for example, here the node 0 is the start state, and there are certain accepting of final states that are denoted by maybe uh, having an having a double circle. So, like on the node 6, you are having double circles, this is, an, this is an accepting state or a final state. So, there can be more than one final state very easily. So, now what do the finite state automaton do? So, they are they they recognize regular languages that is the language that is specified by the regular expressions. So, any regular expression you can always convert into a uh, automaton finite state automaton. So, now if you see the automaton that is provided on this slide, what is the language that it at that it recognizes? What are the words that will be passed through this? And by seeing that you can also see how the automaton actually works. So, if you give an input like C O L O R to this automaton, what will happen? So, it will start with the start state, you will take the first character C, from a start state on the input character C, you will go to the state 1 from this graph. Now, state 1 you take an input O that is the next in, in the input and you move to state 2 and so on and as you end with the with the phoneme character R you end up with the state 6 in this graph. So, given an input like C O L O R, it is accepted by this automaton, but what happens if I give a word like C O L O U R, you can see that there is still a path, you can go from 4 to 5 and 5 to 6 and this automaton can accept C O L O U R. So, it will accept two words C O L O R, C O L O U R, but what happens if you give it is some other word like C O L R. So, you will see C O L will go to state 3 but if you take r, there is no path from 3 that takes an input r. So, it cannot move further. So, this input will not be accepted by this automaton. So, what? So given an automaton, finite state automaton, what it does? It, it recognizes a, a finite, so not finite, a regular language. Okay? So, if you give any string from the regular language, it will accept. That means, this will end up in one of the accepting states but if you give it any other string that is not in the language, it will not accept. So, this will not end up in any of the accepting states. So, now, how are these finite state automaton used for doing the morphological analysis? So, what is the idea? The idea is that when you when you combine various morphemes, there are certain changes that happen at the boundary, mainly concatenation and this is very, very regular phenomena. So, if I want, want to capture that two words like boy and car can be made converted into plural by adding an s, I can simply have a state for the noun where boy and car both come together and then I have a sing, single uh, edge from there with s marking that there is a plural. And now you think about all the possible plurals that you can make in English. All the singular nouns can come to the same state and then you have a single arrow that with s and that will convert into plural. So, so that very efficiently captures the process of converting in from singular to plural and as long as this is regular, 
this is very very straightforward then how do you do that so here is an example in this slide so so only three states are shown here q0 q1 q2 q0 is the start state and q1 and q2 are the accepting of final states many other intermediate states are not shown we will see that in some of the later slides so from q0 to q1 you have the regular nouns like car boy bag etc and then so all of these are also words in english you can now add a plural morpheme s to convert them into plural so go going from q1 to q2 but as such what happens if you have a irregular noun like goose to gich so that cannot go to q1 because to gooch if you apply s you will not get its plural form so for the irregular nouns you have a different path that goes from q0 directly to q2 again there will be some intermediate nodes for individual characters or phonemes in in that in the language in the word so both the singular and plural will go to q2 so q1 and q2 both will accept the words in the english similarly this is in fsa financial automaton for english adjectives okay so you have some prefix like un then you have the actual adjective root like happy and then you have certain suffix h like er est ly so you see here we are also showing some sort of morphotactics that what kind of morphemes follow other kind of morphemes okay so now what kind of words that you can generate by using this automaton so you can say unhappy unhappy okay starting from q0 or from q0 you take an absolute transition go to q1 and you have happy and er happier happiest happily and so on okay so so you can generate words like happy happier happiest real from q0 you take an absolute transition go to q1 then you have the adjective root real that and q2 is a final state so you can generate real if you have to generate unreal from q0 you take un that will give you un plus have the word real and go to q2 you become you get unreal okay similarly all other words you can generate by using this particular automaton so yeah so as we already said in these examples we are also seeing some english morphotactics that is what kind of morphemes come after another kind of morphemes in in english now now but what do i do about regular and irregular roots in english how do i capture that information in this automaton so can we include the lexicon also in my automaton so that's what we will see so if i also want to include word like words like car cars bag everything in, inside my automaton how do i do that so this is what we have seen so from q0 i take all the regular nouns to q1 all the irregular nouns directly go to q2 okay but now i i want to include the lexicon so let's take a very very simple and a small lexicon so i have the words like bag boy and dog as the regular noun and man as the irregular noun and i want to generate all the so i want to recognize all the singular and plural form so what do i do so you see here from the state q0 i am now having all the possible other intermediate states that take the regular singular nouns to q1 okay so i have different nodes for b and then the b is shared among bag and boy okay similarly there is a different state for going to dog and finally all of these they go to q1 all the uh, regular nouns in the singular form and then you get you can have s added to that this becomes plural so you have dogs bags and boys together what do you do for the irregular nouns you have a different path man and man and men they again go to q2 directly now given this figure can you recognize the the words like boys easily yes i start with q0 when i get the word b i go to the next state o i go to another state y i go to q1 and s i go to q2 so i can recognize boys i can recognize boy man men all this can be recognized by this automaton i can further expand it to include other words in my vocabulary okay but the equation here 
is this the goal of morphological analysis that we started with? So, what is this automaton doing? Given a word in English, it will tell me whether it is a singular or plural word in English, okay. assuming that you have taken care of all the words in your vocabulary while building this automaton. So, it can recognize various words. Okay. So, so that is what we have written here. So, what are the properties of FSH? So, so they are very, very elegant. Okay. So, that is recognition problem can be solved in linear time. What do I mean by that? Given, give, give me any input string. So, you can find out whether the automaton recognizes this string or not in linear time, linear in the length of the string. Okay, because every time you are making, uh, if you are having a word like boys, you are checking if from the start state, if you go, if you take input b, where do you go? O, y, s, and then finally, if you end up in the accept state, you will accept the string, otherwise you will not. Of course, this will happen only for the deterministic automaton, but as in the elegance of itself, we know that every non-deterministic finite automaton can be converted to a deterministic finite automaton and there is a uh, simple algorithm for that. So, we do not have to worry about it even if we have started building an NFA non-deterministic automaton I can convert it to DFA where in linear time you can find out whether a string is accepted or not. Similarly, I do not have to worry about getting the minimum number of states of the automaton okay, because the, again there is an algorithm that converts any automaton into it the equivalent automaton that has the minimum number of states. Okay. So, yeah, so this is why we say this is very, very elegant. You can convert an NFA to DFA, any DFA you can convert in, into the uh, minimum number of states. So, it is very, very elegant. And we have seen that it can work as a language recognizer. Given uh, a regular language, it can, it can tell me a new given a new string whether this is in the language or not. But, so coming to my previous question, is it what we need in the morphological analysis? So, the answer is no, this is not sufficient for the morphological analysis. We, so, so take the word boys, remember what are the different morphological analysis we talked about? We talked about find doing the lambda addition, okay, so take the simplest one, lambda addition. I want to find out what is the lemma for the word boys, I want to find out the word boy. Can the DFA help me to obtain the word boy? It, it cannot. It can only tell me that boys is a word in my in my defined regular language. This, this is there. So, this is either singular or plural, but it cannot tell whether boys is what is the lemma for the word boys. So, I need some some other more model that can given a word can also give me what is the lemma or the root form. So, for that so, FSH are language recognizers or generators. So, we need instead transducers that can help me do morphological analysis. Okay. So, what are transducers? So, transducers are very, very similar to final state automaton except that they can help me translate one string into another. Okay. So, now what happens there? How do they do that? The, the model is very similar to FSA, but now in each edge of the FSA, instead of having a single phoneme as the label, I have the input phoneme or input character symbol and the output character symbol. So, it, it translates one character symbol to another character symbol. So, that, that solves my problem of going from the input string like boys to an output string like boy. Okay. So, let us take the, the example on the on on the on the same lexicon of four words and their plural. So, earlier we saw the finite register automaton, where we were having each edge label with an input character only. So, finally, it could recognize whether a word is there in the language or not. But now, we have the transducer, where each edge is labeled with the input as well as the output character. So, you see here, so you have m, m e n and e is the input, a is the output. So, once you give an input like m e n to, to this transducer, the output you will get is m e n, the actual lemma. Okay. That is how they can solve the morphological analysis problem. Now, some 
small details that what might be the problem that that you might face while doing that. So, for example, here is an input. So, so we are calling it the lexical label cat. I want to cat. I want to convert it to a its noun, but a plural form. So I know cat cat gives me cats. Okay, but what happens if I take a word like fox? Fox will give me foxes. Okay, so they will be they are changed at the at the boundary. You are adding an e between fox and s. So now there are many ways in which you can handle it. One is you have you take cat as a regular noun and then have a regular plural to that, and fox as a irregular noun separately. This is one possibility. But the interesting idea is if you can use a two-level morphology. That is between the lexical form cat plus noun plus plural and the surface form that is cats, can I define an intermediate form that is cat, there is an s, but in between there is uh, some placeholder that can be null or e depending on what are the phonemes available in the stem and the suffix. So, that is instead of going from lexical to surface label directly, can I go to the intermediate label first. So, this is my first label and then I transfer from intermediate label to the surface label in the second level of morphology. So, this is my two level morphology. So, example is so the motivation example is for cats and fox. So, instead of going from fox plus n plus pl to foxes, I go to fox and some placeholder and an s and this is the and then the end of the end of word. Now, I can have a second label rule that says if my stem is fox affix is h s will there be some addition. In the in in between, will there be sudden change in between? That can be taken care of by a separate module. Similarly, cat, there is a placeholder in S. I can find out if what should be the actual surface form given this intermediate form. So here is an example. So I have in my vocabulary words like fox, cat, goose, okay, and I am generating the singular and plural form. So, what are you seeing here from from fox to generate the plural form same with cat I add a placeholder s and the end of the character. Okay. So, so that is here. Now, so this is my intermediate form. So, that means at this point I am not distinguishing between fox and cat they are behaving very very similarly. So, I need an additional process to find out given this intermediate form what should be the surface level form. Okay. So, so this is this is the two level morphology. I go to fox as there is something in between that may be null or something else intermediate label and then from intermediate label you go to the surface label. Now, what do you think the transition depend depends on from intermediate to surface level? So, it will depend on what are the ending characters of the stem and the starting character of the affix. Now, given these, what should be the replacement character? Okay. So, you can have these simple rules in this notation. This is also called Kalpin K notation for context, context sensitive rules. Okay. So, that so, the rule says that a letter A is converted to B if A is preceded by C and followed by D. Okay. So, this is if you remember the context sensitive grammar. So, that is what I am saying A is converted to B if preceded by C and followed by D. That means, whenever A comes between C and D, then you convert A to B. Okay. This is the context sensitive rule. So, these kind of spelling change rules you can apply to go from intermediate label to the surface label. You can use these rules to, to do the conversion. Now, so after talking about this two level morphology, in general when people design the morphological analysis for, for a given language, they follow two different kind of approaches. Okay. 
So, so they are also called the linguistic approach and engineering approach. So, what is the difference between the two? Okay. So, in the linguistic approach, what will happen? You have the stem. The stem is already defined in the in the in the lexicon or the, or the language, and you have an affix that is also defined. So, to the stem, you will apply the suffixes, but the surface changing rules will be taken care of separately by the rules of this kind that we have just seen. So, there will be rules of this, this kind that will define the uh, the surface how what are the changes that are happening at the surface level. On the other hand, the engineering approach is you will not have the separate rules for spelling changes. They will try to find out the minimum possible unit of the stem that can be used and to that what are the and the affixes can be big and in that case that can be applied to the stem. Okay. Let us see one example that makes it clear. So, so the idea is that engineering approach all the phonetic irregularities will be factored into the index. So, here is one example from Czech. So, so what you are seeing here? So, there are various words woman, owl, draft, iceberg, vapor and fly. For each of these you have the actual word and so that is like for woman is shan, j d n and owl it is s o v. So, here the root word and there are various affixes that are applied in various grammatical functions that are abstracted using s 1, s 2, s 3, so on and p 2. There are various grammatical uh, functions. Okay. It you might cut, you might treat them as singular, plural and, and so on. So, to a given root word where its affixes are being applied. So, what you are seeing here are the final forms. Okay. So, for the initial two words they seem pretty pretty regular. So, you have the word s o v you apply a y e n o for getting different different uh, forms. Similarly, for j d n s k i c you see some difference right they, they are in red. So, what is the difference that you are seeing? So, now the, the suffix y has been changed to i in the case of s 2. Similarly, the accent is gone over e from e and you are getting the sim sim simple e. So, that is why it is in red. Okay. So, this is irregularity. This is ok, but what happens if you go to iceberg with k r? You see in the case of s 3 even the stem gets a change. So, on r you are getting an accent and for p 2 you are getting another word another character e in between k r. So, you are getting k e r. So, now so, so on you will see such changes even vapor and fly. So, now the question is how does one capture all this all the changes all these irregularities in the case of stems and the suffixes. So, now in the linguistic approach what will happen? I will take the same root word. So, for example, here I will have s k i c as the root word and k r as the root word and the same set of suffixes. So, y a y e with an accent and o are my suffixes. That is my root and the suffix pair. I will add these and whatever ir, uh, spelling change rules I will try to enumerate what are the different spelling change rules by taking what is the previous character previous to previous character I will try to define the spelling change rules in that way that is a linguistic approach. What will happen in, in engineering approach? I will try to find out the part of the stem that is common across all all these variations. So, it is ok with the first three j d n s o v and s k i c, but with k r I will take only k as common I will not take r because r is getting changed into something with an accent or with an e and r. So, I will take only k as common is part of my stem and everything else remaining I will convert into my stem that I am adding and that you see in the last three. So, you have only k p and m as the actual stem and everything else goes into the suffix. So, this is what is engineering approach. So, by doing that you do not have to worry about handling the uh, spelling change rules separately. You are you are handling them here itself. Okay. So, there are various toolkits that are available for doing the morphological processing. For example, at and FSM library that is very popular. Again the open FST tool is very very popular for doing the morphological analysis for a given language. So, so this is this was about our uh, 
computation morphology using finite state methods. So, I have very very briefly talked about what are finite state methods and how do they how do you use that for computation morphology. So, in the next lecture we will talk about in the same process a more popular problem about part of speech tagging. So, what is the problem of part of speech tagging and what are the different computational models that you can use to handle that.